everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Cosmic Matrix podcast with your host, Bernhard Gunther and Laura Matsu. And the title of this podcast and the topic of this podcast is Why This Moment is the Ultimate Spiritual Test. So we're going to be talking about how we are being spiritually tested right now. We're going to offer potential suggestions on how we can rise to the occasion and pass that test. And we're also going to be talking about the nodes are going to be switching. Um, For those who are not familiar with evolutionary astrology, the nodes of the moon are going to be switching in December to the Taurus-Scorpio axis and what that means for us collectively and humanity. So before we get into it, we just want to make a quick announcement for our January Embodied Soul Awakening 12-week private online group coaching program. We have, I think, a handful of spots left. So by the time you're hearing it, we may only have a few spots left. Um, But it's basically a 12-week online group coaching program in psychological and spiritual self-work. And we go into various topics and various practices that we actually talk about on the podcast. So for those who are interested and want to join us for this next January round, um, we we are taking applications through awakenapply.com. And if you would like more information about the course, you can always go to Bernhard's website, veilofreality.com, and you can get more information under the courses there. So let's get into this topic. So there's been so much going on, and I just want to take a moment to just honor how intense it's getting, I think, for a lot of people, especially if you live in Canada and Australia, Austria, Germany. I mean, the mandates are starting. Um, and yeah, I, I think that a lot of us are kind of maybe in shock about how far it's going, even though we kind of knew the agenda all along, right? So basically the, t- the topic of this podcast is that we are being presented with the ultimate test and we've been going through this already. So it's a test of conscience. It's a test of sincerity. It's a test in authenticity. It's a test on, can you speak up? It's a test on your individuation. So many different ways we've been tested. Friendships, relationships has been te- have been tested. It's really crazy to watch. I mean, the true colors being shown really, you know, especially in the yoga community, all these people who were all into holistic health and well, et cetera. And now all of a sudden are pro-vax when, you know, three years ago they were anti um, mainstream medicine and big pharma. So it's been really, I think, alarming for all of us to just see, you know, what is happening in our, in our community, what's happening in our own lives and the polarization that's occurring. And I think we all have our own lessons in the midst of this. I have my own lessons. Every Each of you listening have your own lessons to learn, you know. But there's also collective lessons and collective themes that we're all kind of struggling with, you know. And we notice this because it actually comes up in our group pr- programs as well, is that there are pretty general themes that everyone is struggling with. So we are being tested, you know. This really is a test of our conscience. And some people are passing and some people are failing, actually. So... Maybe you can talk a little bit about what you see currently happening, honey. Yeah, so many, many things happening and have happened so far. It's definitely intensifying. Um, before I go deep into that, I also want to add on what you just said and in, in, in regards of tests, right? Why this moment is the ultimate spiritual test. And really, it's always important to keep in mind, and I've said this over and over again, in light of the evolution of consciousness, all there is are lessons, Right. <clears throat> so even now there's an opportunity obviously mostly our ego personality don't like to hear that we always like to blame externally and all of that right and it's not about uh, just gazing on a navel and just going in, in inside and just everything will magically disappear no no action needs to be done as well and definitely resistance but everything there's an opportunity in all this are lessons in the end of the day and as laura just pointed out these are tests on on various levels on the spiritual level psychological level you're testing your integrity and all of that and with everything what's happening right now as it is intensifying for example let's summarize what happened recently i mean at the day of this recording today is december 1st just yesterday officially canada um is not letting anybody leave its country unless they are vaccinated 
uh, mm -hmm. over age 12 and not let anybody come in unless they're vaccinated. Yeah, which is so crazy. That's, that's yeah. just insane. Yeah. Uh, and this is also like people jump right away, oh, anti-vax and this and that. I mean, it's I cannot even question it without committing basically a thought crime at the danger of getting canceled and deleted and all of that and Facebook, whatever. You know, this is psychological warfare of censorship mm -hmm. and you cannot ask questions anymore, which is the whole uh, basis of true science is to ask questions and question the established science. You know, what we're seeing right now is actually nothing scientific about it. It's just the church of scientism and dogma and uh, the medical pharmaceutical mafia uh, in the hand of the globalists taking over and taking away our freedoms based on this fear virus, right? Um, as I always say, if we would truly apply critical thinking, apply true science and apply true common sense, the whole COVID narrative, what's happening in the world will fall apart in five minutes, the official narrative anyway. Yeah. But, you know, so a lot of things are heating up. They just released the race, uh, announced <laughs> the recent variant, the moronic Omicron, play of words tells you right there. Uh, that apparently appeared in South Africa. It interestingly, also appeared in the country where there were no more COVID cases and, and people wondering why there are no COVID cases and the Africans are not going along with the program. Da, 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 all of a sudden, a variant appears there. And also, know? let me say one thing, is that you can't travel unless you're vaccinated or you have a negative COVID test and then somehow this virus has spread it to the UK and I think even in Canada yeah, now. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's, it's appearing like, out of nowhere, right? Yeah, the time travel. Yeah, so like, yeah. <laughs> well, and then it's also a quick question. It's like, okay, so, I mean, we've questioned the concept of virology before, I think, on this podcast, either the first or second hour. But let's just say that you do believe it exists. Then you have to realize that only the vaccinated or people who produced a quote unquote negative test are the ones allowed to travel. So this whole psyop that it's the unvaccinated who are creating these new strains and variants is wrong. It's actually people who have gotten the it jab. Goes, it even goes against the official data. Yes, exactly. exactly. So, and, and sorry, yeah, you want to continue? Yeah, and also it's interesting to note because there's definitely even various uh, more and more vaccine injuries, deaths happening worldwide. It's hard to cover up. Top athletes, you know collapse on the on the playing fields all over the world yes exponentially right blood clots and everything now interestingly apparently coincidence coincidence not the omicron um um what do you call them symptoms are quite similar to uh the vaccine injury symptoms and deaths right yes, so yeah. obviously they need to cover that up and yes, you wanted to say something? Yeah, because this is really new. I also wanted to share um, that there is Pfizer and FDA documents that were released today via a court order, which basically says that one out of 37 adverse events was death. And this is only what we, what they accounted for. That's the official ones. Right? Yes, this is the official The, the unreported The ones. FDA admits that these are only recorded <laughs> adverse events that they are considered above mild. There are so much more that wasn't released. But still, the recorded adverse events of death was one in 37. Yeah, and then you can uh, multiply this by 100. Actually, John Rappaport wrote an excellent article. I posted it recently on Telegram as well as on Facebook, uh, as long as I'm still there for the time being, where we talked about the Amicron, the kindergarten opt, you know, or PSYOP, so to speak, and talked about also the official numbers of death injuries and, and, uh, um, and deaths based on the vaccine. And you can usually, the common way to, uh, to account for the non-reported ones mm. is you just multiply that number by 100. Oh, wow. So that tells you a lot about what the action number may be. Yeah, so, it is increasing. So so then basically the recorded adverse events was 42,000. No, sorry, 1,227 deaths by February reported. So yeah. if that, if, and this is by the FDA, so it's American. I think it's, it's just, just America. America. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So d times that by 100, that would be 122,700. Which is still very... Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and this is also, oh, sorry, one more thing to know. It was only until February. Oh, okay. So that's and now that increased changes. exponentially. And apparently they have 36,000 pages of documents, but they're going to release them 500 pages at a time. Jeez. So what else is happening? So we see this in, the, in, in Canada, in Austria. People have seen these horrific pictures of uh, um, the unvaccinated not being able to uh, leave the place and and getting into forced mandatory vaccinations. They're very disturbing footage from uh, 
uh, Germany as well, the German police in like just uh, how do you call them? Um, I know the German word Razzia uh, doing an, um, just getting into stores or or restaurants, checking so people's checking people's vaccine passports and papers. It's like Nazi Germany all over, just in a different disguise. Yeah, but this time people justify it because <clears throat> here's the thing. Let me just reverse a little bit. Because I've just also come across an incredible article which was sent to me by my friend John Paul Rice, who I've had on here before. And actually, uh, I'm going to look it up. Um, it's about really what, what we need to understand before we get into all the facts, because people always point out the facts, documents, and, and, and critical thinking, and what's really happening, absolutely, we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand people cannot be uh, convinced by the facts and about what's really going on by information data alone anymore, because why they are severely mind-controlled. We're dealing with the mass hypnosis, as Dr. Malone, yeah. the inventor of the mRNA, mRNA vaccine, actually alluded to, and he's all, all against, he sees the globalist agenda and the mandatory vaccinations. He talked about this this mass hypnosis. Yeah, and yeah. there's another article that ties into how the governments and all the media and and have done this for a long time with the propaganda, literally use MK Ultra style mind control techniques, hypnosis techniques, NLP techniques against the population mm -hmm. to mind control them to change the internal belief system. So, <clears throat> and people, people are, are people are not even convinced, but you know they cannot take in the truth information because they have completely hypnotized by this fear yeah. of the so-called virus. And before this, people were already easily programmed. <laughs> That's a, so social like, engineering. That's exactly. Social engineering exactly. 101. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So do you want to look for that article? Yeah, or? you keep going and look for the article. Yeah, so, I mean, this moment, I mean, obviously I have my own personal beliefs in this as well. I just want to preface it with this. But I have to say... You know, at this point, with how far it's going, and if you know what's going on right now, and you're not at least resisting in your own life in some way, you know, then then you're also contributing to the tyranny because it's the people who are silent, actually, who end up creating the majority of the tyranny. The people who are really against, who are really for this and really are for all the mandates and for mandatory jabs and whatnot, there's a small minority But when you join them with the people who don't say anything and who don't want to like stir the pot, then they actually become the majority. And that is why it is important that we do create this ripple effect and we all speak up in our own way, you know, because we need to actually become the majority. I think we are the majority, actually. I could be wrong. Who knows? I don't know the stats, you know. And I want to just actually give a quote by this woman, uh, Naomi Shulman. Uh, where she kind of talks about this uh, idea of niceness and how it can support tyranny. And Jordan Peterson talks about this a lot as well. He talks about the big five personality traits, which is really like basic personality development uh, kind of social, social, um, you know, social understanding. But he really talks about this trait, high agreeableness, and how that leaves people vulnerable to tyranny. So people who are people pleasers, people who don't want to stir the pot, people who just want to get along, you know, these become the order followers of authoritarian regimes because they don't want to upset anyone. And I think actually Canada, you know, as a, as a culture, as a country belongs in that country, belongs in that category, typically high, high agreeableness, you know, and he actually says in order to resist tyranny, you have to be disagreeable, And that's kind of, I mean, he's a good example of that, even though he hasn't spoken out as much as I would have liked. But here's what she says about this. Nice people made the best Nazis. My mom grew up next to them. They got along, refused to make waves, looked the other way when things got ugly, and focused on happier things than politics. They were lovely people who turned their heads as their neighbors were dragged away. You know who weren't nice people? Resistors. And... You know, what comes to mind when I read that quote is because... I'm sorry, what's her name again? Naomi Shulman. She just wrote okay. a book about, um, okay. yeah, World War II and her, exper and her experiences <clears throat> during it. Um, but yeah, what actually comes to mind, and I've talked about this in other podcasts, is I had grandparents who were living in Canada in World War II who had their home and their business taken away um, because the Japanese people were seen to be enemies of the state, you know, it was, and... and 
I see many signs leading up to that are similar as well. Even actually the other day, if people haven't heard, they were throwing Aboriginal people who came in contact with people who had quote unquote COVID and they were putting them into these Howard Springs camps. And then they were trying to make it seem like these Howard Springs camps were actually amazing and they, people were having fun there. And I don't know if you saw this. Did you see this? Uh, did you see this? No. Where, where they were showing people in bikinis at, this, oh, I at saw the, at that the quarantine actually, like, camp and be like, oh, look, propaganda. At how, look yeah, at how yeah. good the quarantine camp is and then someone did something really beautiful and they compared it to an image of japanese people playing baseball in the internment camps and that was my relatives my uh one of my uncles and grandparents they ran a baseball team in bc and that doesn't like and so them trying to justify it and be like oh look at them they're in bikinis they're having such yeah, a that, good time that also reminds me of like again the lowest common denominator just the lower vital lower animal nature yeah just because someone's to, to the sexual yeah, instinct just because someone's wearing a thong <laughs> in a quarantine camp doesn't mean it's a good time and just because they were playing baseball you know that was how they kept their spirit alive but you know the main thing is that what what i realized during this time, and maybe this is my own kind of personal ancestral karma within this, is that who are the people who didn't say anything when my grandparents got their homes and business taken away? Yeah. Who were all, what, where were all their neighbors? Where were all the people who weren't Japanese, who knew them and were part of their community? And that's what I actually see happening now, you know, and I can't force people to speak up. Obviously no. I'm not going to tell people what to do and what not to do. I get it that a lot of people have um, maybe even a fond trauma response where they don't. And I have that sometimes too in social situations where you just agree with the person because you're in a free state that can happen too but it is really critical you know like we need to kind of get our get our get our um disagreeable muscles working here basically yeah i just want to mention i found the article i, I referred to before about the the psychological warfare it's called mind space psyops and cognitive warfare winning the battle for the mind and i will link it in the info section of this this podcast i um, highly recommend it to read um, so going, re referring to what you just said in light of really the topic of this, um, podcast, why this moment is the ultimate spiritual test and it goes on multiple levels and, you know, people, anybody who has followed our work for a while, our podcast, and even though the courses we do, we definitely emphasize of combining both the inner and outer work. So we're not just saying go out and protest, get into this activism, boom, boom, boom. Yes. The inner work is definitely necessary. We don't want to shadow project externally, act our unconscious trauma or become what we fight against in the way, right? Um, at the same time, we cannot just hide away and just do our inner work and think that magically reality will change. It's both inner and outer work always combined. And there's, we always go even deeper in our course, the activation of the spiritual warrior, which is not some philosophical, it's not just posting on, 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 on uh, social media and whatnot, but have the courage of the warrior to stand up for something bigger than you. And this is very much necessary. And as Laura just alluded to, I see various different reactions. I see many people, you know, similar to us, who have been aware of the agenda. I've been aware of this agenda for over 20 years. I didn't obviously in detail predict, but it was clear for me that this is the new world order would at some point, you know, take over humanity based on some sort of external event. And that's what we're seeing happening now. So... For those who have been in the game for a long time, we have maybe an easier time to speak out. We've gone through the individuation process already through our disillusionment and dark night of the souls and lost our families and friends already years ago, mm -hmm. right? And many people are now, I can see this even with many people who we're getting quite a few applications for our um, um, group program and people just, quote, woke up recently over the past six months, last year and whatnot. And there's more overwhelming. Most most people struggle with is the division within their family and friends, and people have a hard time letting go. Yeah, and some hold themselves back, or yeah. people their whole career is based on the consensus state, and they're afraid to speak out because they think that they're going to lose clients or lose their job and all of that, right? So there are those people then who rather who know the truth but st keep quiet because their own survival instinct kicks in, they first think about themselves, which is a natural response, by the way. We don't want to diminish that, mm -hmm. right? But it needs to go beyond that uh, because something much bigger is at stake. And st keeping silent, it's not only um, has detrimental effects on the, on, on the bigger picture for all of humanity, but even yourself or anybody is doing that, right? Trying to shy away, hide away, and ultimately li leaving, living a double life. As I actually wrote a newsletter out to my email list on my website, a newsletter, 
asking the questions, are you living a double life? And I see this a lot. People know the truth and uh, refuse to speak out because they're afraid of attacks, being shut down, being canceled, being uh, criticized and all of that, potentially maybe using clients. And these are all valid, uh, you know, concerns. But being silent is not an option anymore. We need to put ourselves out there. And I see this in particular in, in the so-called commun uh, spiritual community, uh, the people pleasing, people just, uh, you know, uh, um, not standing up for the truth and really pointing out what's really happening, but trying to make nice, play nice, pull the middle uh, ground fallacy. Why we, can we just all go all along and yeah. completely distortion of, of compassion? Sometimes fierce compassion needs to be tell the truth as it is mm -hmm. and not just be nice. Most people mistake niceness for compassion, right? So, um, and see, I see this a lot and that's their karma to take. I, I'm, it's very hard for me personally to relate because of conscience is my following, you know, and like conscience tells me to make a stand, to speak up, right? Doesn't mean to mechanically engage in any activism. It needs to still ground it, you know, from our deeper nature. Uh, but, you know, uh, there needs to be a resistance to counteract the anti-divine forces on the very basic level. Mm -hmm. Yes, protesting, absolutely, but more is needed on the very basic civil disobedience um, as well as non-compliance and all of that and not going along with it and speaking out. The more we speak out, the more we help uh, everybody, the more we inspire others. Yes. So you need to get over your own inhibitions. And again, I'm not the one, I cannot tell anybody what to do, but those are, see the people who are living a double life and don't, they know better. And that I think will have more severe karmic consequences than people who are completely programmed, conditioned, oh. right? And are, are truly ignorant You're in right. the fear virus. Yeah. And they just don't know any better. In fact, according to Scott Peck and people on the lie, he does say that an aspect of evil is actually having a conscience and knowing the right thing to do and then not doing it and there then acting in spite and of it. And then the way people spiritual bypass, then they justify it for themselves. You know what I mean? Or yeah. I don't want really to focus on the uh, on the negative. You know what I mean? I don't want to, you know, uh, create the vision between the vax and unvax and yada, 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 right? The lies to the self can have a long list. Yeah. And I'll, I'm just going to uh, read something that I that I wrote, which I think is also going to happen as well. Um, you're about to see a bunch of people spiritually bypass in the next stage of the jab roll out of the agenda, which has now moved to targeting children. Their psyche will not be able to handle facing the reality of the situation. So they will use all sorts of spiritually bypassy justifications. It's their karma. It's not part of my reality. If we don't imagine it, it's not happening. They will distort higher truths as a way of avoiding having to say something something or take action the only people who will be able to face this level of evil in the eye and do something about it will be the people who have done their inner work and faced evil within themselves these times are not for the weak and i think this is also you know so so the nodal axes are actually changing to Scorpio and, and, and Taurus. And I actually have this nodal axis in my chart. So it's going to be my nodal return. And I'm going to read to you a little bit about what Stephen Forrest, who, by the way, just as a, as a, as a, as a um, disclaimer. disclaimer, he's a total pro jab SJW. I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. He's not my favorite astrologer, but he does talk about this, um, nodal axis changing uh very well and i think it happens in december 22nd sometime in december and he says bottom line and we're all dealing with this as a transit by the way it all comes up to us uh it will all show up in our lives in different ways and he says bottom line collectively humanity is about to face an eruption of messy scorpionic energy and our best hope for navigating the storm will be keeping our eye on the calm harbors of taurus between now and July 2023, which is when uh, the nodes will switch to another sign again, all of humanity needs to go there. We need to face our collective woundedness. The time has come. As a general principle, we can assume that in prior lifetimes, every single one of us has been shamed, betrayed, enslaved, raped, pressured into war, or subject to violence and other violations. These are some of the scorpionic chickens that are coming home to roost. Why? Because it's time, because we're ready to heal. We must never forget that these processes of healing, regeneration, and recovery are the heart of the matter when it comes to the south nodes of the moon. And then he also says, you know, we basically need to, he says, he talks about how we need to face our, our sins as well. And what he means by that is we need to really own our truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
Um, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. We'll all be facing those whom we've hurt and those who have hurt us. We may be in new bodies, but the essence of the unresolved drama is staring us right in the face. As ever with the lunar nodes, we are saying to the cosmos, set it up again. I want another look at it. I want to get it right this time. I want to make it right. All those unresolved, uncomfortable emotions are surfacing. Ironically, so, can I just say, ironically, his own words might fly into his face, considering he was believing in the propaganda. Oh, yeah. The and then he's, I don't know if he'll be able to wake up to that because he's very deeply programmed. But, yeah. but basically, I know this node intimately. I also have Pluto on my son when this, my south node is ruled by Pluto. So it's like amplify. But I have to say, you know, working with this node my whole life, what the Scorpio end of it does is it pushes you to your limit. And in my case, and I don't want to scare people, that limit was actually a life or death situation several times in my life. I got pushed to the brink of suicide, basically, through circumstances in my life and and, and not wanting to um, look at the uncomfortable emotions, not wanting to look at my childhood trauma, not wanting to look at my toxic relationship patterns, not wanting to look at the impact of my uh, drug addiction, you know? So I had to face all of it. I was really like, I mean... I don't think, uh, I, I think the only people I know who had been through a worse dark night of the soul were me, were the people I met in detox who had been m- many generations in addiction and prostitution. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, with Pluto processes in general, is that if you suppress it and you suppress the lessons that you need to learn, what happens is, is the pressure builds up, the pressure builds up and then it explodes. And what might happen is that, if you're putting off certain lessons or certain things that you need to look at the over the next couple of years, they might come to surface all that unresolved stuff. That's kind of the Scorpio process. And the reason it does that to you is because it wants you to develop spiritual strength. So a lot of our strength is actually coming from a lot of physical strength, mental strength. It's coming from security, feeling comfortable. That's not real strength. I mean, contacting the part of you that does not die is really the ultimate lesson, you know? So the part of you, I actually heard a really great line uh, recently is that the part of you that is afraid of dying is a part of you that is going to die. And if we just embrace this as far as our own rebirth process, we have to understand everything that we're afraid of facing is actually the part of us that needs to go. And that's kind of what we're going through is we're going through our own individual and collective rebirth process right now, aiming towards the Taurus North Node, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, But really, it is this collective rebirth process. I talk about this in a lot of my tweets and a lot of my writing, by the way, like I don't actually say the astrological transits, but I talk about the themes. And, you know, we are going to have to face those skeletons in our closet. And so that's going to be different for everyone, you know. But the one thing that I see actually in normal day-to-day life is that people think that they can avoid learning their soul lessons and put them off for another day. And they will do that for literally lifetimes. And you're, I, I personally feel you're going to have less of a chance to do that over these years. So it is the time to engage in deep soul work and like be here for the reason that you came to be here for, you know, a lot of us have been conditioned into lies, into relationships, into our whole lives are set up based on lies, basically. So now we're here to really live a life that is in accordance of what we truly value, you know, and build that world. That's the Taurus North Node. So just thinking of that and thinking like what parts of me need to go? Where do I feel stuck, stagnant, low energy? What is draining me in my life? And those are the things to re-examine during these next couple of years. Yeah, very well said. Which also reminds me in that light, in this this process, everything will be revealed, everything will come out. That's I'm not talking about the external truth, but the dark need to be made conscious of within yourself and without. So there's no hiding really. Any to the people I just mentioned before who live a quote a double life, who know the truth but are afraid of speaking out and show themselves very different in their persona than how they really think and feel inside. Uh, you, if you keep living this, it's a it's a betrayal to your soul. It's unnecessary friction within yourself. There's yes. a conflict. There's a spiritual conflict, and that can you not only bring up more stuff, uh, create more havoc in your own life because you uh, it, you create a more dense shadow within yourself. 
of uh, of betraying yourself, of not being truthful and not in integrity, it will also manifest on metaphysical, physical levels then in in in, in disease, even illness. That's a whole other topic. Illnesses, uh, like people think, oh, they're catching a virus left and right. No, most illnesses are the manifestation of severely suppressed trauma, emotions, stress, and all of that. So that will all come to the surface. It's begging you to the surface. So it will be... You know, as um, Adya Shanti said, it's going to be extremely liberating for people who give themselves to the process to burn the fire of transmutation. And it's going to be uh, extremely challenging, a lot of suffering for people who resist that process. There's no standing on the sidelines anymore. Anybody who covers, we talked about this before, this whole distortion of non-duality and this uh, and, and, and neutral neutrality and all of that, which the intellect hijacks. Yeah, are they? You're, gonna, you're in for a rude awakening. Yeah, because and, and there, are they gonna, there needs to be a decision to be made. And are they going to kill? Are they going to pull that card when we start to see? You know, even even we heard someone someone in your family your 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 family friends knew died of a oh just recently yeah. died of a he brain hemorrhage, which yeah. we don't we don't know for sure. But you know, you brought up at a really point important about the self betrayal because that's also a Scorpio theme. theme so say, so thank you for mentioning that. You know. Because when we don't live a life that's in accordance of our values, Taurus, North Node, mm -hmm. that we're being called to, is that we end up in situations where we betray ourselves, you know? So you need to know what you value. You need to know what you stand for. You need, you need to know what's important for you in life. Because if you don't, you just end up in whatever situations present themselves to you. You make friends with people who don't have the same values. You you, you keep relationships with people who don't or have jobs. the same. Yeah, jobs, all of it, all and of then it. You, and then you're stuck in the self-pity and, and blame the other but you're really betraying world. yourself yes. so if i so here's here's an example you know like i really value just straightforward authenticity in all of my relationships just tell it me how it is and tell it to me soon you know but if i get into relationships with people who don't actually value authenticity then I'm going to get betrayed again and again and again because, or I'm going to feel betrayed rather because they're going to lie to me. They're going to cover it up, the truth or whatever, you know, but it's really me betraying myself because I'm not articulating my values and I'm not living true to my values, you know? So just think about that. Like, cause this is the theme of the Scorpio access is like, how do you betray who you really are on a day to day basis? And I struggle with this a lot too. You know, there's a lot of times um, you know, where people share what they heard on the news and I'm just like, you know, face palm and I overhear it and I want to say something and I don't, I'm working on this all the time. You know, like I also had to learn how to be a people pleaser in my environment in order how to survive. But I have to say that people pleasing attitude and that in inability to say no and stand up for what I actually mattered to me got me into lots of situations where I got taken advantage of as well, you yeah. know? It reminds me of the quote by Carl Jung as well, not of shadow, whatever uh, situation we have not confronted within ourselves, you know, made whole within ourselves, we experience as fate externally. Exactly. And that's what we see experience uh, uh, collectively and personally. And then people, if you do the soul betrayal, lie to yourself, you know, live it, you know, are fractured inside, that's what you experience in your personal life. And then most people then engage in like, uh, the, the self pity and feel like a victim to life and and, and yes. it's just an endless cycle the victim blame trap right they yeah. blame their relationship the, anybody um, but the key point to understand is also like here it ties into it universal laws hermetic principles for example as above so below as within so without you know we're living the under the illusion that the outside world is, is is separate from our inner world no the outside world is also a reflection of an inner state and vice versa on a personal and collective level yes we don't live in a solipsistic vacuum like the new age uh, distortion uh, mm -hmm. you know that we all it's all interrelated but also you know when you're fragmented when you are not whole within yourself when you don't really feel authentically within yourself that's ex that's then manifested in your outer reality as well that's the kind a relationship situation jobs you will attract as well yes that's what it comes down to and that's you contribute more to the fragmentation and pathology in the world because you yourself are fragmented and not whole and not in integrity and not living a truthful life exactly right so the yeah. lies within are the lies out there and vice versa manifest on multi-dimensional levels just as this is the way we're in yeah yeah so it is you know um we're gonna we're gonna be tested um, we're going to be tested on a spiritual, emotional, and psychological level. And so that you can discover, you know, um, your, like, 
you know, Taurus basically stands for physical resources and Scorpio stands for spiritual resources. So the question is going to be on both sides of the equation is like, can you generate the spiritual resources to make it to this next stage of living a life that's more in alignment with your values, you know? So being resourceful spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically, resources are a key thing right here, you know? So what's going to happen, I think, is a lot of people, it was already happening, maybe even quite a few people who listen to our podcast will lose their jobs because they don't want to stand up to the mandates, you know, and that is you actually living a life in accordance with the Taurus North node that we're leaning into. You are choosing your values above maybe physical security or financial security. Yes. And then that, that, that will trigger your survival impulse impulse on a spiritual and psychological level. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to say that like, you know, the the worst experience like so when i got really pushed to my limit in 2012 for the final time and was like literally about to die and then i got intercepted um by a cop actually um and i had to rebuild my life and mind body and spirit is i had to activate a strength in us in me that i didn't even know i had and this was when i was physically weak like my body was destroyed i it was hard for me to even walk a block at times that's how messed up i was you know but i had to generate that spiritual strength to make it to the next level and i went through a total rebirth i'm a totally different person now that i was back then i don't even know who that person is anymore and that's what we're all going through collectively as well is like can you risk a certain level of physical, even financial security to gain a new level of spiritual power, you know, because the the Scorpio South node tends to push people to their limit. It's not, it's not something where you're just going to kind of like coast along or whatever. You will get challenged so that you can draw and even recover that spiritual strength within you. Yeah. Yeah. And I also want to talk, mention about this, a couple other things. And we have talked about this before, you know, as we mentioned, things, will get worse than they are right now. Worse, the ego is already freaking out. Oh my God, it's going to get worse. I'm not implying, I'm not feeding the doom and gloom fear frequency. You know, it's just looking at reality cold hearted. And I've said that many times before in our podcasts, in my newsletters, in my writings, know their enemy, know their self. Know their self, the true, do deep inner work to connect to your true self, connect to the divine, your soul being, your immortal being. That's the only place where you can find true security. And know that enemy, you have to know what you're up against. I think most people, even maybe long time truth seekers or people, especially people who just woke up, have still have no idea the evil that's uh, coming up that we're up against, right? Nothing external is part of the evolution of consciousness. You got to keep the bigger picture in mind in, in light of the law of ascent and descent. As Sri Yobinda said, none can reach heaven who's not passed through hell, or Carl Jung, the tree that reaches to heaven needs to have roots in hell. So there's an evolutionary process that everything needs to be revealed. And we're up against an evil agenda people have no clue of uh, in light of depopulation agenda and all of that. So to the extent, we have mentioned it before, Paul Levy has talked about this in his work with Vertigo and, and basic young in psychology. You can only really understand the evil out there to the level, to the extent that you have faced your own darkness, your own unconsciousness, right? To really see what's happening. And you know, most people are still have rose colored glasses on and live on the illusion that it's going to just be over by next year. No, 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 no. You know, this keeps going on and on until we also make a stand on an act activism level, on an external outer work level, but most importantly, inner level as well, right? To yeah. align with the right and, and engaging the will, so to speak. But uh, I want to mention one thing because I also have these are intense times, a lot of compassion, empathy. It's sometimes overwhelming for Laura and I as well, right? We need to obviously engage in the work. And it's extremely overwhelming. So much is happening at the same time. Not only the, the mandates, the medical tyranny crackdown, um, all the attacks, you know, from, from the Agent Smith types, you know, canceling, can, being canceled on social media, losing your job, and all of that financial struggle, health struggles. You know, a lot of people in situation, they might need to move to a new location, all of that. Yeah. So much is happening at the same time. Financially, should we put all our money into crypto and then get crypto rich and all of that? It's all Taurus. It's, a whole, yeah. it's all Taurus, you know what I mean? So it's about resources on several levels. And I'm all for, we need to prepare on multiple dimensional levels, including physical. Some yes. people, yes. Uh, location, we talked about this in depth in the recent podcast, is, is some people need to leave as well. But and as Lauren and I have, and especially if you're in a more... Uh, draconian country and all of that but you know 
careful of the shadow side of, of Taurus, which is the complete indulgence and over security and just materialism. Yeah, you cannot buy yourself out of it. Is you know, yes, as here's the thing I've talked. You I you think you might be able to buy yourself out of it if you had a lot of no, money. No, yeah, let me let me, I'm, I I think there's something much bigger happening that goes. You can have tens and billions of dollars that will not save you from it. Yeah, because it's a deeper soul lesson here. Yeah, you would have to isolate world. too. By yeah. the way. Yeah, but this goes beyond because whatever. Okay, you isolate yourself for this lifetime. You will still have the lesson to learn your next yeah. lifetime. Whatever. Oh, you, I get what you mean. Be, okay. Yeah, because yeah, the yeah. money, like, we don't want to, you know, you don't want to deny the material world. There's, there's a lot to be said about poverty consciousness and how this in the matrix operates and all of that. I've written a newsletter about this recently as well. Yeah. So there's needs a preparation. Being also entrepreneur, take 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 it into your own hands. Don't become dependent on the system. Decentralize. I'm all for crypto and all of that, but it can easily move into greed and over security and just hoarding, hoarding and trying to escape. Yeah. You know, I've talked to hundreds of people literally over the past uh, couple of months. Um, reason being for the applications to our course and doing discovery calls, literally from all over the world, from Eastern Europe, Russia to UK, Germany, Western Europe to Canada, US to South America, Costa Rica to New Zealand, Australia, Africa, all over the world. And no matter where people are, whether if there is nowhere to escape to, yes, you can buy yourself time, right? But here's the trap, you know, that's also for me to each their own, but yeah, you need to take care of yourself. But if you're just trying to escape and isolate yourself, you're missing a big lesson, right? And you're mm -hmm. just acting from your own selfish egocentricness. So yeah. what, what else? There needs to be higher calling for others as well. I'm not talking become a savior or martyr, right? But something bigger is happening here and you cannot... Uh, escape from it i even see it like for a lot of people move to mexico more power to them absolutely if that's your calling but i can also almost tell you like what will happen now is going to similar what happened in south africa um, in africa there was nothing going around oh all of a sudden the variant just wait for the next variant to be discovered maybe in mexico south america it doesn't matter because all these smaller countries are be forced to go along with the great reset over time so just believing that there's some sort of physical uh, place you can escape from it all is uh, illusionary. Maybe, yes, you buy yourself time, but you're also missing a big lesson. And then yeah. again, I'm not implying that you shouldn't, everybody needs to decide that for themselves. And I think location does matter, but more is needed than trying to hide out in some location. Yeah. And the thing is, is uh, so now I get what you mean, because yeah. if you have a lot of money, you know, you could just F off to some island and be like, I'm not going to deal with it. But the thing is, is like, what are you going to do? Not check the news, not talk to any of your friends, not engage with the world. Like the rest of the world is, is, is affected and impacted by this. So you would have to actually, which is also a Taurus thing, by the way, is Taurus can isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they can get into survival mode and clamp down and be like, okay, just just as long as I'm prepared and get in their bunker and Over whatnot. preparedness, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's a shadow side. But I'm like, what I'm talking about and what I talked about and we'll have to talk about more on the second hour is that there is a um, spiritual evolutionary lesson yes. around living in accordance with your values, which mm. is central to the Taurus archetype and evolutionary astrology. So if you're, if you're, you know, there's de there's a lower manifestation, or maybe let's say a less evolved, I guess it's the same manifestation of the Taurus archetype. And then there's a higher manifestation. And the highest manifestation is living in a life that's in accordance with your own values. And what does that give you? A sense of self-worth. Also a lesson of the Taurus archetype. And then if you're looking at it from a 3D level, it's like, how can I make as much money as possible so I so I can survive? How can I, you know, live in abundance? So that's so there's there's different levels of this lesson depending on the level of consciousness Definitely that level you're of being too. That it's yeah, true. the level of yeah. being that's interacting with it. But I'm telling you, as someone who has this North Node and who is constantly having to define this over the past, I don't know, like five six years of my life, is that defining what you value and what you truly stand for will give you a sense of self worth and will make your life a reflection of something that you truly enjoy and i also want to point out them also because people some made it confused there's a vast difference between your deeper values as opposed to your desires yes yeah right? like yeah 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 a value is like 
For me, I value, I said it earlier, authenticity in relationships, even if it hurts me. Like I'm a, I'm a kind of Scorpio type person. I can tell when you're not being real with me. So just tell me like it is, you know, I also value people at this point is like, are you speaking up? Do you, do you have a, do you have a voice right now? Because in my view, you know, another Taurus lesson is loyalty, actually, who to trust, how to trust them. That's a Scorpio lesson, though. No? That's a Scorpio lesson, too. They, they kind of share, yeah. the polarities t tend to share similarities, actually. But, you know, and, and if you're willing to speak up right now, at least I know that you're on the side, you know, you're on my team, basically, in this, in, in this, no, that's, in this that's battle. Important. And, and, and see, what I'm noticing is that, if I have people who I know are aware of what's going on and who stay silent and don't say anything, how do I know if it got worse and they were forced vaccinating people and throwing them into camps, which is really my catastrophizing nightmare. I don't think it's going to happen, at least not in the U S will these people stand up for me? I that's, don't know. That's very true. I mean, that's what I see as well. Many people I know, like, you know, um, loyalty is key because what happened, the reason, you know, what happened, like the unthinkable happened, but happened is happening now. What happened in Germany, Nazi Germany, also Eastern Germany, the Eastern Bloc, is the start the snitching on other people. We see yeah. this already happening. People calling out, canceling people, you know what I mean? Trying to get their, their lives, their jobs destroyed just because they question something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they're becoming a threat and it's fueled by the media that anybody who questions the vax or the vaccine, uh, the, the virus, whatever, is a threat to society, basically. It needs to be taken down yeah. and people go along with it. And I, similar to you, I question us, even close people I know who don't say anything, right? Can I trust these people, you yeah. know? And when it comes down to it, will they more think of themselves, Right or yeah. uh, of 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 others and the bigger picture. That's well, really what it comes down to. And well, everybody needs to um, kind of come to terms with, with in their own con with their own conscience. If they're you know that's the, that's really a test of conscience. We have talked about that before as well. Yeah. So we'll have to talk more about that in the second hour. Yeah. But I have to say, if they're thinking of themselves now. It's going to, when stuff hits the fan, they're just going to go even more yeah. into survival mode. So that's going to be the shadow side of this upcoming access is entering into survival mode yeah. where you shut down entirely, you know, to, and that's kind of the shutdown to survive is actually like a, a, a Taurus South Node motto, even though the South Node is going to be a Scorpio, but it's like, like with people who have Taurus South Node, sometimes they shut down to survive and people will do that, you know, and if you have to do that, like, and you need to take care of yourself, you know, like you do that for the time being, you know, we're, I, as I said, we each have our own soul lessons, but always remember this highest lesson. If you take one thing away from this podcast is what do I truly value in life? And am I living a life that's in accordance with those values? That's that's the definition of integrity. Yes. Basically. Yes. All right. Yeah. So we go more into this in the second hour. Um, especially like I want to talk more about the depopulation agenda. A lot of stuff I want to talk about, which we have not necessarily can share in the public first hour. Um, but if you're not a member yet and want to have access to the second hour, please go to my website, veilofreality.com, V-E-I-L of reality.com, and you can sign up to the membership. And also thank you for your support. It gives you also access to the membership forum. And if you're interested in our next installment of our Time of Transition Embodied Soul Awakening 12-week intensive private group coaching program, Starting January 3rd, you can also go to my website to uh, find out more about that or apply directly at awakenapply.com. And uh, with that being said, see you all in the second hour. Mm -hmm.